Music teacher sends me to the principal's office for ignoring her, but I'm deaf. Here's what happened. Subscribe to Am I the Jerk on YouTube and hit the bell for notifications. So this happened a couple years ago when I was fresh at high school in year 7. I was in the grade for 11 year olds for the international peeps. One important thing to note with me is that I'm profoundly deaf in both ears and can't hear a single thing without the use of my cochlear implants. However, I can lip read pretty accurately, so I'm not completely lost without them. Another thing to note is that my CI run on batteries and these need to be replaced around every two days. Most of the teachers were pretty understanding about this and would often go out of their way to make sure that I could clearly hear what they were saying, such as seating me towards the front of the class and standing directly in front of me when addressing the whole class. Except for one teacher, who was a real jerk about it. She also happened to be a music teacher. She'll be known as Miss O. Also, this is probably the worst combo because music is also my weakest subject, for obvious reasons. Me and my form, we're a pretentious school and like to call the class that we register and go to lessons with our form, are off to our music lesson. And this happens to be a double period. Yes, we're pretentious and period means lesson. So that means it's about an hour and 30 minutes long. Anyway, so we start the lesson and pretty much two minutes after we sat down, the batteries in my CI had run flat. Remember how I told you that they go flat every two days? So I needed to change them. However, as my bag, which had my batteries in it, was in the room next door, I decided to raise my hand, like an obedient little boy, and ask if I can go and grab my batteries. At this point, I could still lip read and understood what the teacher was saying, but I'd much rather be able to hear. Anyways, she pretty much ignores the fact that my hand is up and after a couple minutes, I pretty much get the hint that she doesn't want to answer my question. I thought, whatever, I can still lip read and understand most of what she's saying. So Miss O basically asks the whole class to go on the computers, listen to an audio file she'd sent us via email, and then use that as inspiration to digitally create our own piece of music. She also wanted us to show it to the class at the end of the lesson. Now, because I didn't want to get into trouble, I raise my hand again to try and ask if I can get the batteries from my bag, but she ignores me again. So I'm like, okay, I don't even like music anyway, so no big deal. As a result, I pretty much sit in front of the computer screen doing nothing, as I can't hear the audio file or make any somewhat decent piece of music. Remember, this is a double period, so it's a pretty long wait. After 5 minutes, I get bored, and I decide to start talking to my friends, again lip reading. I basically let them in on the joke, and we're all trying our hardest not to laugh too hard. Pretty soon, word gets around the class, and now they can't wait until the end of the lesson to see what Miss O is going to do. The end of the lesson rolls around, and when it's my turn to play my piece of music and I pretty much sit in silence, the whole class starts laughing, but trying to stifle it at the same time. This is how the conversation between me and her goes at this point. Can you not hear me? I asked you to play your piece of music. Ironic, I know, right? I sit there in silence and the laughter's getting louder. Are you even listening to me? Are you trying to disrespect me by not listening to anything I say? Well, honestly, just play your piece of music. It's not that hard. I'm trying to stifle my laughter at this point. <laughs> I can't. This is how you treat your teachers? Get out of the class right now. So I get out and pretty much wait there until the lesson's over. I think she was expecting an apology from me, which was never going to happen, because after a couple minutes, she pops her head out of the door and barks at me. You have absolutely no respect for your teachers. Meet me at the City View at lunchtime. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. At lunchtime, I meet her at the principal's office like she said. Another important thing is that I'm pretty friendly with the headmaster. She opens the door and the conversation goes something like this. This guy was giving me an attitude during my lesson and wouldn't listen to me. I'd give him a Friday after school detention, but I feel he deserves to get a Saturday detention. Original poster, would you like to tell me what happened? Well, my batteries for my CI died and I raised my hand to ask if I could get the replacement batteries from my bag, but she proceeded to ignore 
ignore me. At this point, Mrs. Zo looks like she's having an epiphany. Well, are you sure about this? Because he has no prior record of being disobedient. Mrs. O looks a little flabbergasted. Yes, I'm completely sure he was disrespecting me. Sir, you know that I'm deaf and I would never on purposely do that to a teacher. Well, I'm inclined to believe the student here. If you have no proof otherwise, there's nothing to discuss. Mrs. O then goes extremely red as she realizes her mistake and storms out of the office. The headmaster gave me a slight smile before ushering me out of the office as well. Ever since then, she's never ignored me whenever my hand goes up. <sighs> Teachers sometimes. I mean, that's just the way it is. It's a power trip from them, what can I say? She clearly knows you have an issue and is choosing to ignore you because she thinks what she has to say is more important. God forbid she have to acknowledge a student's needs. Who knows? Maybe she was just having a bad day. But it sounds like you have a history with this teacher. It's kind of stupid for the music teacher to give you a hard time when you literally have a hearing impairment. You would think that would be the one class where you would deserve a little extra leeway. Regardless, if a student has their hand up and needs something, the teacher's supposed to acknowledge it. If you're not going to work by those principles, the child literally has no way of interacting with you and letting you know what they need. The whole thing kind of falls apart. You can submit your own stories to be featured here on the channel. The story submission link is in the description below. And if you want to listen to some 5B music in the background, check out Easy Mode, also linked below. And don't forget to subscribe. Entitled Mom Demands I Pay Kids for Shoveling I'm one of the many in the Midwest hit by the snowpocalypse. I think we got like 14 inches where I live. I also want to preface this with I don't like kids. I don't hate them, I just don't have any experience with kids and haven't felt the need to reproduce any of my own. I'm a 26-year-old female. I work from home and received a knock at my door today. There was a group of like four 12-ish year old boys and they had shoveled my driveway and sidewalk and were now requesting payment. They expected $15 each. I was really confused because they never knocked to ask if they could shovel my driveway. They just did it without asking and were expecting to be paid. I was really just dumbstruck and kind of said I don't have any cash. And one of them pulled up a smartphone saying they had their mom's Venmo account. Again, me just being extremely confused, I started saying that I never agreed to pay them for anything. I was going to shovel my own driveway at lunchtime. If they had asked, I would have said no. The kids got really upset and were like, you're not going to pay us for our work? But again, I didn't ask them to shovel my driveway. They started yelling at me and I just kind of shut my door. Fast forward a couple hours and their mom comes and knocks on the door. I open it and she starts screaming at me for not paying their kids. Her points were A, it's only $60 and clearly not going to break me, which wasn't wrong, and they put in the work and should be paid. Her boys did a nice thing for me. She was proud of her boys for using their snow day to help people. And and that me being really ungrateful was going to make them turn to substances next time. This is where I started to get kind of mad. I said that I never asked for their services, and it was nice that they shoveled my driveway, but I never agreed to pay them, and they really should have asked first. She insisted I pay them this time and they'll ask in the future, but I don't want to reinforce bad behavior. Just because they're children, people feel the need to let them get away with whatever. This is just not a cycle I want to perpetuate for these kids. You can't manipulate people into paying you for something they never asked for. I don't know. So far, I've refused to pay, and now I'm getting torched on next door for being a heartless monster who took advantage of children. Am I the jerk? No, I'm totally with our original poster on this one. You can't be reinforcing that. That crap is borderline a scam. It's like when you're stopped at a light downtown and the homeless guy runs up, squirts some Windex on your window and wipes it with a newspaper and then asks for five bucks. It's like, I didn't ask for you to do that. I'm sorry, I get you're just trying to make a buck, but I'm not gonna pay you. I don't feel good about how you just assume that I'm gonna give you this work. It's a total totally different story if they're knocking on the door and the person says yeah sure and there's an agreed upon price beforehand but to just go ahead and do it and assume is a jerk move customer lies to me about a technical issue that they're having 
and as a result, the entire company is shut down for two days. At my previous job, I worked at the business support desk. One of the products we offered was a SIM slash data management service. Basically, you would buy a block of data, say 100 gigabytes per month, and however many SIM cards you needed. Then you can assign data to SIM cards as needed via the customer portal. We weren't the actual cellular network provider, we just sold data and SIMs on their network. We would often receive tickets regarding SIM cards not working. 90% of the time, it was a configuration issue. You need to use the correct APN to connect. Other issues were signal problems and faulty devices, not the SIM cards themselves. They don't just suddenly become faulty bar the odd dud one from the factory. On this particular day, I received an urgent ticket first thing in the morning about a SIM that was offline and not reachable. The tech who logged it was very insistent that this was an urgent issue and wanted constant updates. I checked checked from our portal and could see that the SIM still had data assigned, so it was not a simple issue of running out of the assigned data. Our first response in this sort of situation is to have the user check the physical SIM, take it out and reinsert it, and confirm that the correct APN was in use. Our TNCs firmly state that this is the user's responsibility, as the SIM could be anywhere in the country. Not long after asking the above, the tech responds that the checks have been done and asking for an ETA on the resolution. At this point, I was pretty sure that they were lying and had not checked anything. I get a sixth sense about these things, but had no proof. At this point, our next option is to have the cellular network provider check the SIM, which takes at least a few hours. With the tech continuing to hound me, I ended up escalating the call with the provider, who confirmed that there were no issues in the area and that the SIM was offline. By now, it was mid-afternoon and I was getting very annoyed with how the tech kept asking for escalations and ETAs, when I knew they were lying about performing the requested checks on their side. If they had done the checks, this would mean that the SIM card just failed after working for months. That just doesn't happen. I decided that it was time to comply with the tech's request to expedite the issue. I drafted an email confirming 1. The tech had performed the requested checks. 2. The cellular network could not find any issues. 3. The SIM had sufficient data available. and 4. The next step was a SIM swap which I would ensure was done immediately. As soon as the email was sent, I called the individual responsible for SIM swaps and by the end of the call, the swap was complete. For those that don't know, a SIM swap is irreversible and renders the old SIM completely unusable. Shortly after, the tech's manager got involved and asked us to postpone the SIM swap as they wanted to check the device on site, confirming my suspicion that this was never done. I replied that the tech had informed us that all the on-site checks were done already and that the SIM swap was expedited due to his insistence. Turns out that the SIM was in some networking equipment in a mine in a remote part of the country. The tech's company now had to send someone to our office to pick up the new SIM, then drive all the way to a remote mine to replace it. Potentially a two-day job. I'm not sure if the tech received any disciplinary action, but he never asked to escalate a SIM issue ever again. There was no fallout for us as we're covered by the TNCs. Look, I get it. We've all been on the phone with tech support where they ask you to do a bunch of stuff you already tried. Have you tried turning it on and off again? Things like that. Which, 9 times out of 10, yes, you've already tried. But in this case, support was suggesting the very first thing you're supposed to do to check the issue, and the tech never did it, but said that they had. I mean, you have to at least try. Even if you don't think that's the issue, just humor them. They know more than you do. That's why you're calling them. Give it a shot. See what happens. Otherwise, this could be the result if you keep escalating. Entitled Karen tells me I have one easy job that I should focus on doing. Then when she asks me for help, I tell her that's not part of my job. Long ago, way back in the before time, I worked for one of those bulk warehouse club stores. My trade was simple. I was a wrangler of the silver buffalo, and dutifully retrieve old ghetto strollers I did. The job, in and of itself, wasn't the worst I'd ever had. I got plenty of exercise, got to be outside, and generally didn't have to interact with the members. Calling them customers was taboo, for the most part at least. The thing about this job is that the company I worked for had a reputation for 
for being cheap. Thusly, more often than not, I was on my own out in the parking lot. Big whoop, you might say. You gathered carts. You should see how hard my job is. Yeah, well, shut up. This is my story, butt munch. I digress. The reason that being alone sucked is that this store didn't have just one kind of cart. Heck, they didn't even have just two kinds of carts. They had your classic garden variety cart, the kitty cart with the plastic facade to make it resemble a car, the electric scooters which weren't supposed to leave the store but did so with alarming frequency, and finally, the bulking hard to control flatbeds. On top of that, whenever someone needed help unloading their haul into their minivans, I was the guy they called. Because, you know, the greeters, cashiers, and managers were all busy. As you might expect, one man cannot be in multiple places at once. And as a result, on some of our busier days, it became incredibly difficult to keep enough carts in the vestibule. Our story begins on one of these days. So there I was, chugging along like a good worker drone, struggling to keep up with the sheer volume of people coming in to buy cheap bulk goods. Sure enough, I get a call on the radio. Uh, original poster, we need you to help some members load their purchases. Uh, I'd love to, but I'm barely able to keep up out here as it is. Just do it, original poster. You can afford to stop gathering carts for two minutes. Actually, I couldn't. I didn't want to push my luck, so I complied. After spending 20 minutes loading people's purchases, because when one person needs it, suddenly they all need it, I came back to find my vestibule a near ghost town, save for a single line of carts that was half gone. And the Karen. I won't waste time describing this specimen. She was the prototype. You know what she looked like. There she stood, menacing, tapping her foot with such speed that could make any metal drummer green with envy. You could collect the contempt in her gaze in a jar. Where the big flat ones. I blanked for a moment. I'm sorry? Ugh, Mexicans. For the record, I'm very much white. Where are the flat ones? Oh, you mean the flatbeds. I'm sorry, I was just helping some other customers load their merchandise and haven't had a chance to- Oh my god, I don't care about your excuses. You have one job, and a trained monkey could do it. I just want this lady out of my face, so I don't fight it. Sorry ma'am, I'll grab one from the parking lot for you. You'd better. So I go back out to the lot and find a whole line of flatbeds sticking out of a corral blocking several parking spaces. I push them all into the vestibule where she waits, huffing about how I'm wasting her valuable time. I separate one from the rest and bring it to her. I'm terribly sorry about the wait, ma'am. She leers at me with utter malice. Unbelievable. And with that, she dismisses herself into the store where she'll be someone else's problem. I shake my head and return to doing what I'm paid to do. About 15 minutes later, I'm returning a line of carts when I see her pushing her flatbed to her Miata and jawing about stupid people on her cell phone, most certainly referring to me. You know what she had bought? What she had insisted on having a flatbed for? A cake. This wasn't even like a big cake. It was one of those little circular numbers, like 8 inches. Anyways, I witness as she continues to yammer on about how I nearly ruined, RUINED I TELL YOU, her precious baby's birthday party when the most glorious thing happened. Still clutching her phone with those scoop claws of hers, she attempts to pick up the cake with one hand. The plastic topper pops off and she spills the cake all over her undoubtedly expensive designer outfit. Seething with white hot rage, she locks eyes with me. You! Give me another cake! Now! Terribly sorry, ma'am. I've got one job, and these carts won't gather themselves. I walked away, with a massive grin plastered on my face as her shrieks faded into the distance behind me. I've had my share of nasty customer interactions before, but this one really took the cake. Come on, Karen, you can't have your cake and eat it too. Ah, huh? see what I did there? I can be funny too, original poster. In all seriousness though, you can't criticize someone for not doing their job properly and that being the thing they should focus on, and then asking them to do something entirely different just for you. I get it, all Karens think that all customer service people should be there to help them with whatever they need. 
God forbid they have a specific task that they need to actually be taking care of. Karen's problem is clearly much more pressing. There isn't any employee that would help Karen out in this instance. You screwed up, and you were a jerk on top of it. Even if you weren't, I'm not responsible for getting you a new cake because you dropped it. Maybe next time, take a second to put your phone down and quit complaining about everyone else and focus on what you should be doing. You know, kind of like what you told our original poster to do. And also, who the heck needs a flatbed for an 8-inch cake? I seriously can't understand the logic behind it. Is it easier for her to push with one hand while she's on her phone? I really don't know what her train of thought was and why she needed a flatbed specifically. Regardless, I'm sure this was a very satisfying moment for our original poster. They were very courteous to the lady and did everything that they should have done. They're just not going to go above and beyond for you when you're being a jerk. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories. Or if you want to listen to some vibey music in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Jerk, give Am I the Genius a shot. Everything linked in the description.